Hello and welcome to my weekly video blog and today on A Vogel Talks Menopause I'm going to be looking at six more good foods for the menopause. Now if you like my tips and advice then please subscribe and remember to hit the bell icon so you can be reminded of new videos. So this is week two of my month on food for the menopause. Last week we looked at oestrogen rich foods or plant oestrogen rich foods that can help during the menopause and today I'm going to look at six more good food groups for the menopause. So why do we need a good diet in the menopause? Why can't we just carry on the way we've always done? The problem is as the hormones start to change this puts a huge amount of pressure on your body so your nutritional needs go up and if you're low in the good stuff then your body is going to be more vulnerable to symptoms and it's going to find it harder to make its way right through the menopause. The second thing that happens is the majority of us end up stressed during the menopause, both from the hormonal changes but also life in general as we get to menopausal age. And stress strips us of a lot of nutrients that we need and those can affect our sleep, and especially our mood. So it's really important to make sure that we're giving our body everything that it needs to help us sail through the menopause. So let's have a little look at these food groups now. So we're looking at foods that are rich in what's called omega-3. This is called an essential fatty acid because our body needs it and we cannot make it for ourselves. Why do we need omega-3? It's very important for your joints, it's very important for your skin, and it's very important for your memory as well. So it's one that we all need during the menopause. Foods we're looking at, if you eat meat, are things like fish, things like um, oily fish, so that'd be things like salmon, tuna, um, and mackerel. You, you can look at seeds, flax seeds oil, chia seeds, sesame seeds, look at your nuts. You've also got tofu if you're vegetarian or vegan. Um, you can certainly look at some of the, uh, the soya foods. And good healthy fats in the menopause would be your um, organic extra virgin olive oil and your coconut oil as well. My favorite omega-3 food would be probably baked salmon, sprinkled with a little bit of lemon or lime juice, some sea salt, and a little piece of organic butter. Just one of my favorites. Second group is your calcium rich foods. Why do we need this? Because our bones become more vulnerable to osteopenia and osteoporosis. So it's very important to make sure we get enough calcium rich foods during our diet. Problem here is when we talk about calcium, everybody thinks of dairy. Two things with dairy, one is it's high in saturated fat, which we don't want a lot of. Secondly, you could be saying, well, I use skim milk or I use semi-skim milk. If you go to low fat dairy products, they become higher in milk sugars. So they then end up contributing to the sugar part of your diet. So all I would say with dairy, for those that, of you that have dairy in your diet, have them very sparingly, tend to go with the whole fat rather than the low fat, because a lot of the low fat products as well tend to have sugar or artificial flavorings in them, which is, is not good either. So a little bit of dairy, things like your cottage cheese, Things like um, yogurts tend to be really good, um, but go for organic if you can. It's much better than, than the ordinary stuff. Other things you can look at if you don't have dairy, you can look at your dark green leafy vegetables. You can look at things like kale um, and, this, and your nuts and seeds as well, which seem to, to come into um, absolutely um, everything here. My favorite calcium food, um, believe it or not, whole oats are really good for your calcium. They're part, part of the grains. So I like proper oats, not the ones in a packet with sugar in them, but the, the real um, unadulterated um, ones with a um, couple of um, dessert spoonful of nuts and seeds and some almond milk. 
Now that, you would just think, well, it's probably, why is that good for calcium? That whole dish will give you about three to 400 milligrams of calcium, which is an absolutely great chunk out of your daily diet. So if you're wanting something good for breakfast, um, and again, if I'm not having a cooked breakfast, this, this is one of my favorite ones. Group three is your magnesium rich foods. For those of you that have been with me for a while, you'll know just how important magnesium is. It's very important for our mood, for sleep, and like calcium, it's very important for your bones. Magnesium is the bus that takes calcium to your bones. So if you're low in magnesium, even if you're high in calcium, that can still have some effect um, on, on your bones. So magnesium is really important. We call it our happy mineral, and that just tells you why it's, it's needed so much. Magnesium rich foods, your nuts and seeds, avocados, dark green leafy vegetables, beans and lentils, your, your pulses, tofu, um, dark chocolate and whole grains. And you know, nature is wonderful because so many of the calcium rich foods also have plenty of magnesium in them. So if you're taking them from both groups, you're getting added benefit from one set of particular foods. My favorite magnesium rich would be probably um, a tie between avocados and dark chocolate. Um, not so much the, the, the dark chocolate, but I love cocoa powder. So if you can get dark, uh, organic um, cocoa powder. It's only about 10 calories a teaspoon and you can put it in so many different things. I love it in yogurt. If I'm grinding up nuts and seeds, I will put it in that. So it's a lovely way to get a chocolatey taste into your diet without the fat and the high calories. But with the cocoa powder, as with the dark chocolate, you're getting a lovely little hit of magnesium, which is a, a lovely way to, to do it. Group number four, complex carbohydrates. We need a small amount of these in our diet because they help to stabilize our blood sugars because in the menopause, our blood sugars can go all over the place, which can lead to severe cravings. We also need complex carbohydrates because they produce fiber and fiber is needed to keep your bowels working well because very often in the menopause, our digestive processes slow down and many women can suffer from sluggish bowels or constipation. So complex carbohydrates, we're looking at things like whole grains. So these would be your, your wholemeal brown bread, your brown pasta, and your brown rice. What you want to avoid is foods made with white refined flour because they will interfere with your blood sugar levels and they won't really give you any kind of, of benefit um, at all. My favorite complex carbohydrate, I think for me, would be something called soba noodles. These are made from buckwheat, so there's no um, wheat in them, especially for those of you that are on a wheat-free diet. Um, they're very satisfying. They take about four or five minutes to cook. Um, I sometimes put them in soup. You can add them to your main dishes, and they're really nice just with a, a sprinkling of, of soy sauce on the top. And sometimes if I'm really hungry and craving carbohydrates, then I'll just make myself a little dish of these and that usually sets everything um, to right. Group number five is your protein. This is really important too and it's one that a lot of women miss out on. There's not only hormonal changes going on in the, uh, in, in the menopause, there are physical changes too and our body needs plenty of protein in order to make these changes happen. And one of the really simple ways to tell if you're not getting enough protein is if your hair starts to, to deteriorate because our body sees our hair and our nails and our skin as not being important. So if we're low in nutrients internally, the body will just say, don't have enough for the hair, don't have enough for the nails. So if you find that your hair and, and your nails are not as good as they were, then that's very often a good indication that you're just needing a bit more protein. 
In theory, you should have a little bit of protein with each meal, um, if you possibly can. So, protein as well is needed for muscle mass. And as we get older, and, and this is really nothing to do with the menopause, this is just to do with the fact as we age, then our muscle mass can decrease, and that can have a huge impact on our metabolism and also for helping to support our um, joints as well. So protein, really, really important here. So you're looking at um, eggs, you're looking at um, good quality meat, you're looking at your fish, a little bit of dairy, as I said before. If you're vegetarian or vegan, then it's about upping your nuts and seeds and your, your pulses um, and, and your beans. The only thing I would say here is, you know, there's only so many beans and pulses and nuts and seeds that, that you can eat. So if you feel that your protein needs are, are, are decreasing or you want more, then what I would suggest is a plant-based protein powder and have that as a shake once a day just, just to top up your protein. Your local health food shop will have loads of them. They'll have all different flavors. So this is a really nice thing that you can add into your daily diet um, without getting too bored with everything else that you're already eating. My favorite protein, um, I love all sorts of protein, but I think for me, probably eggs, purely because they are so versatile. I love omelettes for breakfast because I can put loads of different vegetables in them every day so I can have something completely different. I also like to make sometimes a little bit of egg mayonnaise just for a snack um, and it's a nice one to have in between meals if I've got a really, really sort of busy physical day going on and that will keep me going un until my next meal. The last group is your B vitamins. B vitamins are really important for energy, they, they're energizing, they are also really important for brain function, and they're very important to help extract nutrients from food. So at a time when we need all the vitamins and minerals that we can get, making sure you've got plenty of B vits in your diet is, is a really good idea. Your B vits, these will come from your whole grains, they can come from meat and eggs, things like your, your beans, and your nuts and seeds as, as well. So, um, you know, this is a, a good one to add into your daily diet. My favorite, I think, is just a mix of um, nuts and seeds, as I've mentioned before and, and in other video blogs on, on, on food. Um, these are great to add into everything. You can get mixes already in one packet. I tend to buy all the, the seeds separately because it, it seems to work out more economical. I just mix them together. They can be sprinkled on seed, uh, on your salads, they can be sprinkled in your soups. You can grind them up and put them in yogurt and um, other cereals as well. So they are a really versatile food. And again, even just adding in one portion of nuts and seeds a day, that is going to help with your omega-3, it's going to help with your calcium, it's going to help with your magnesium, and it's going to help with your protein, and it's going to help with your B vit. So these are a really super um, staple food for going through the menopause. Now, other tips, really important. Loads of veg, little bit of fruit, we're reckoning on at least five portions a day to give you absolutely everything that you need. Just make sure you get enough fiber to help your digestive tract. Remember the water, really important um, on, on a daily basis for absolutely everything. Um, you can also look, if you feel that your diet's not as good as it could be and you're, you're maybe struggling a little bit, if you're looking for something that's going to give you that little bit of extra magnesium, calcium, zinc and potassium, we've got our super balanced drink. You just have a sachet once a day and that can be a nice top up if you feel your diet is just not good enough at the moment. If you're still struggling with diet, I have written a blog on the best diet for the menopause. There'll be a link that you can just pop over to and, and have another little read through if you need to. Hope you found this helpful. It's quite a, a session this week because it, it, it is quite a, a sort of complex subject. If any of you have any questions on this, please do get in touch and I will be happy to help. Next week, it's going to be the worst food and drinks for the menopause. Um, and I'm sure we can guess already what some of those are going to be. 
Till next week, um, I'll see you then for another edition of A Vogel Talks Menopause.